Hello, everyone. My name is Sojin Park, and today I will talk about how we can remove the overheads of consistent replication by exploiting commutability. And this is a joint work with John Osterhout. Replication is widely used to keep our systems running in spite of failures. However, the overhead of consistent replication is pretty high. The reason for such high overhead is because we order operations before replicating. To remove the overhead of consistent replication, I invented a new replication protocol which exploits commutativity to enable fast replication before ordering. It is called Consistent Unordered Replication Protocol, in short, CURP. In CURP, a client can replicate in one round trip time if an operation is commutative with the other concurrent operation. This approach almost removes the overhead of consistent replications. CURP is a simple augmentation on existing primary backup systems, but I believe it can also be extended to quorum-based consensus protocols as well, and paper sketches some ideas on that. I implemented CURP on RAN Cloud and Redis storage systems, and on RAN Cloud, CURP halved the latency and quadrupled the throughput, which is almost as good as no replication. In addition, CURP turned Redis cache into a consistent, durable store with a small overhead. Before talking about CURP, let's see how replication increases latency of operations. Without any replication, a client can simply send an RPC request to a server, and the server returns the execution result immediately. So the entire process takes one RTT. However, with replication, a client first sends an RPC request to a primary node, and then the primary node must replicate the execution result to backups before returning to the client. Otherwise, a completed operation may get lost when the primary crashes. But it may seem that clients can replicate directly to backups in parallel with sending the request to a primary. This could result in one RTT replication. The problem is client requests may arrive at servers in a different, <coughs> at a different order. Let's see the example here. At the primary, assigning one to X arrives before assigning two. But at the backup, assigning two arrives before assigning one. Because of this out of order arrival, the backup now has the value of one instead of two. This is not consistent replication because the, if the primary crashes, the value of X will change from two to one. So this straw man one artificial replication doesn't work. For a replication to be consistent, it must guarantee the following two properties. The first one is consistent ordering, which means all replicas should appear to execute operations in the same order. The second property is durability, which means all completed operations must survive the crashes. The traditional replication protocol combined these two requirements, which prevented us to have one RTT replication. In the example of primary backup replication below, you can see the requests from clients are first serialized at the primary node and then replicated to backups with the total order. As a result, client operations takes two round trip times to complete. So in order to get performance, we need to give up replicating with total order. So CURP achieves durability without ordering and uses commutativity of operations to defer agreement on operation order. This is possible because commutative operations can be reordered without affecting the system state. For example, in the key value store, changing execution order of updates on different keys will not impact the resulting system state. In CURP, an operation commutes with, if an operation commutes with other operations issued around the same time, 
then it can be replicated without ordering. Thus, CURP achieves high performance by replicating in parallel with ordering. On the other hand, if operations are commu not commutative, then CURP fires back to two RTT totally ordered replication. This figure shows how the overview of CURP. Like regular primary backup replication, a client sends RPC requests to a primary node, and primary node syncs the execution results to backups. But in CURP, a primary returns the execution result immediately back to client and doesn't wait for the completion of syncs to backups. So clients can see the execu execution results within one RTT. Instead of waiting for syncs to backups, to ensure the durability of operations, clients replicate their requests to a small temporary remote stores called witnesses. Witnesses don't retain any ordering information, so clients can replicate directly their requests to before serialization in primary. And it's a temporary storage to ensure durability just until the operation is synced to backups. After syncing to backup, the primary garbage collect the operation in the witnesses. During the recovery of a primary's crash, the information in witnesses is used to recover the last few operations that are missing in backups. Now let's look at how clients complete update operations. Clients in CURP send a request to a primary and all witnesses in parallel. If all witnesses accepted and saved the request, then the client can complete the operation without waiting for things to backups. But a, a witness may reject the request if the request doesn't meet the CURP's commutativity requirement, which I will discuss in a couple of slides. If any operation, uh, if any witness rejects the request, the client cannot complete the operation. The reason is because it may be lost if the primary crashes. So in that case, the client must wait for the operation to, operation to get synced to backups by sending an explicit sync request. When primary receives the sync request, sync is most, most likely already completed so the operation mostly completes into RTT. Let's see how recovery works in CURP. When a primary node crashes, the new primary first recovers from a backup, and after loading all data in a backup, it replaces all operations in a witness. The recovery completes by syncing the replayed operations to backups. Relying on a witness for recovery has three potential dangers in consistency. I will discuss each of them in following slides. The first problem is that the replay execution order during the recovery may be different from the original execution order. Earlier, we saw that this can cause inconsistency. When requests arrive at, with, at a witness, the witness cannot figure out the execution order determined by a primary. However, we can make it okay to replay in any order by keeping only commutative operations. So if a new client request commutes with all operations saved in a witness, the witness can accept it. But if it doesn't commute with any saved operation, the witness must reject. In that case, the client needs to wait for syncing to backups. The second potential that issue is that a primary node may reveal the data that is not yet durable. Let's see an example here. A primary completes assigning three to X and responds to client A before syncing to backups. A client A completes the operation by replicating to witnesses, but even 
Even then, neither the primary nor other clients can tell whether the operation is made durable in witnesses. So when another client, client B, with the value, new value of three, the returned value can be lost if the primary crashes. So to ensure the durability of returned value, a primary must wait for the replication to backups before returning the read value. The third issue is avoiding re-executions during recovery. An operation saved in a witness may also be synced to backups before a primary crashes. In that case, both backup and witness can have the operation. If the primary crashes, we recover the operation once from a backup, and second time by replaying the same operation from a witness. Such duplicate execution can cause inconsistency, and in this example, the duplicate execution reverted the value of x from three to two. So CURP detects such duplicate duplicates and ignore them during the recovery by using a mechanism for exactly once execution presented in SSP 15. We implemented CURP on top of Redis and RamCloud, and Redis is a, is a fast key value cache which may lose data in case of crash. By applying CURP, I could make the Redis consistent without impacting its performance too much. On the other hand, RamCloud is already, uh, RamCloud already does consistent three-way replication, and so by applying CURP, I could improve the performance of RamCloud. Due to the time limitation, I will only show you the evaluation of RamCloud implementation today. This graph shows how CURP uh, improves the RAM Cloud's latency. It shows the unloaded latency of write operations with the four different settings. Original RAM Cloud, RAM Cloud without replication, and two versions of CURP, one with uh, three backups and three witnesses, and one with only one backup and one witness. This is the complementary CDF and y-axis is the proportion of data points in log scale. When you look at the median value, CURP almost halved the latency of rank cloud write operations. Also, when you compare the rank cloud's latency without any replication, using CURP with the three backups and three witness incurred just about one microsecond overhead, which is pretty good. CURP also improved the throughput of RAM Cloud. In CURP, syncing to backups is no longer in the critical path of an operation. So primaries can delay syncs to backups to batch the syncing. This batching improved RAM Cloud's latency by about four times. And when, when you compare to no replication case, Adding each backup witness pair incurs about 6% overhead. To learn more about the design uh, and performance details of CARP, uh, please check the paper. So, um, there were several other attempts to reduce the overhead of consistent replication but none can match the CURP's performance in general purpose setting. Generalized Paxos and egalitarian Paxos use the commutativity to reduce the overhead, but they are slower than CURP. Another approach was assuming the network mostly deliver client requests in the same order, and sometimes they use hardware to enforce such assumption, or sometimes they just presume 
and roll back if the assumption doesn't um, match and requests arrive in different order. And somewhere combine the replication protocol with transaction protocol uh, to enable the rollback. In summary, Curve is faster and doesn't require rollback, and also it doesn't require any special networking hardware. And since Curve is a simple augmentation to existing primary backup replication, um, and the change required to uh, apply Curve is very is not intrusive and it's very simple to apply. So from this talk, uh, we learned that the total order is not a requirement for consistent replication. So Curve clients replicate without ordering. At the same at the same time, when it sends the re request to primaries. Even with unordered replication, CURP doesn't compromise consistency by exploiting commutativity of concurrent operations. This approach resulted in better latency and throughput, and which is almost as good as no replication. And thank you for listening, and I will take questions now. Uh, thank you for the good work, Kao. Which you from Caldera? I'm just curious because you use the commutativity. Does that yeah. mean it's not it's, a, it's not application agnostic? And if so, just from an implementation perspective, do you have any way to annotate your request so you can know know the these uh, properties? Thank you. Uh, sorry, is your question is how can we determine commutativity? Uh, yes. Uh, so it can be. Uh, vary for uh, many applications, and sometimes it can be hard. But uh, uh, for for example, um, on NoSQL systems, most operation updates on different keys are mostly commutative. So we can leverage that uh, property. So yeah, yeah. Thank you. So just typically, from an implementation perspective, uh, when you have this kind of work, you would have some sort of annotations. To add into this request, so it's easier to for yes, so to use. Yes, so in our implementation, like when clients send a recording request to witnesses, uh, client also attach the uh, primary key so that uh, witness can easily uh, determine the commutativity with the existing operations. Uh, hi, I'm Yuliang from Harvard. So maybe I missed the context, but I see you have met, uh, multiple witnesses. So yes, so, so um, to provide the same guarantee as a regular primary backup, uh, we have to use the same number of witnesses as the same num uh, number of backups. And probably uh, also we can put the witness in the same server where uh, same machine uh, mm -hmm. used for backups. Yeah, so um, I guess different clients can talk to different witnesses. So do you need to ma uh, maintain consistency between witnesses? Uh, no, each witness operates independently. And like some witness may uh, accept, and some witness may reject. But um, uh, yeah, and they, are, they don't uh, coordinate each other. And, but so if that happens, then uh, client uh, just cannot uh, proceed without syncing to backup. So it just have to do two RTT totally order replication. Thank you. Thank you. Um, one more question. Um, building on the first question about commutativity, mm -hmm. what are the limitations here? There seem to be some workloads at the very least that are, where commutativity is kind of, like in a pure key value store, it would be easy to check. Yes. In a database, it might be a little harder, mm -hmm. even if I you know, have two updates, for example, to two different tables. They yeah. might not be tables, but like views that are actually one of you know, each of them is like almost the same table as the other. Or in a file system, I'd have sim links that actually hide the, 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 the relation between. Is, it, is this mostly applicable to key value stores? Is, what is the more general applicability of the approach? Um, so, yeah, it can be tricky to uh, determine commutativity. But, um, so it was simple for key value stores, but yeah, I, I can see that it can be quite tricky. And 
I'm not sure for other, like, how to handle those complex cases yet. Yeah. All right, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.